Hello and welcome once again to another episode of Big Talk from the Little House. And I'm here again with my dear friend, Andy Pollack, who is a licensed clinical therapist uh, and on-site go-to guy. That's me. Thank you for coming. So we were talking um, today. We wanted to flip the cameras on for this conversation, uh, this this story. Um, this weekend, uh, woke up uh, after a busy weekend with the, with the family, and I have uh, young children, 12 and 10 years old, and <clears throat> we have a family membership at the Y. And so uh, I woke up and I realized that this was going to be our only day to spend time together. So... I rallied up the troops and I said, let's go. We're going to go to the Y for an hour and a half, whatever. We'll swim, we'll work out. And <clears throat> in my mind, I thought that's how we were going to be able to get some family time in. And I uh, rallied up the troops. And of course, uh, to, much to my chagrin, I was met with resistance. Everybody was kind of like, I don't want to go. I don't really want to do this. And and then it turned out to be almost an outright fight between my son and my daughter about who's sitting in the front seat and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so I get to the why. We all get there. And, you know, we end up all going in different directions. I mean, the kids went in the pool. The mom went to watch the kids. Not what your intention Not was. at all what I intended. And I go no, into do some elliptical machines. So I came home. But I had this breakthrough when I, when I, when I got back um, to the house. I had this breakthrough. I'm like, look, I'm not going to be able to control these people, right? They're not, nor should they be controlled. They're individuals, right? We're right. a family. So this is what came to me when I realized through the teachings, when Sequoia uh, and, and in the indigenous rela- uh, rela- uh, the indigenous cultures, they'll talk about their relationships. All uh, all my relations. All my relations. When you let go, you're you know you're guided right into whatever it is you do to do. Right? It uh, just works out in harmony and balance. How can we best help other our, our brothers and sisters? How, how can we best help our fellow? By, by being ex- an example of non-judgment and non-attachment. Being an example of that. Living in thankfulness, uh, living in peace, living in love. That's how we can help others. Um, and what that means... What that meant to me was, you know, we're able to understand, better understand our, uh, the nature of reality, if you will, through the relationships that we have in our lives. Right. The relationship with, yeah. you know, your wife, your kids, your friends. These your... are the relationships we can learn the most from. That's absolutely. And this is where I started, you know, I started to think that, you know, it's, you know, thank you for the uh, resistance that was popping up on this weekend because it gave me a chance to, and I started to get a little frustrated, right? I was like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. so frustrated. Why do people do what I'm asking? But then I'm like, no, there's something here that's, that's not working. I need to look at this in a different way. And so I started to look at them as, you know, I, I, I have to say it, I, I use the Jurassic Park analogy, right? <laughs> you know, and <laughs> these, are, uh, these are dinosaurs at my park, you know? And I'm like, well, these 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 i love these people but i can't make this tyrannosaurus rex get in the back of the car and drive with me if that tyrannosaurus rex wants to play xbox and so i needed to um come up with another way to look at it and what i did was is i I came up with let me just take care of these dinosaurs i love these dinosaurs i love you know the relationship i have with these dinosaurs but you know looking at them as, as 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 dinosaurs helped me to take away from my expectation of them understanding what I needed them to understand. In that case, it flipped it, and now it made me want to take care of them. And like, look, I'm gonna, if you're grazing dinosaur nicely and you're full on all that hay or whatever you're eating, and then you might wanna go to the gym, then maybe we'll go to the gym, and they're like, oh, okay, I'll go. That seems to be a better uh, a better direction. So what I wanted you, know, you to help shed some light on, maybe in this particular area, is what's the clinical, the psychological you know, uh, insight that you can shed on how better we can understand and work with other people in our it's it's a great question pete and i I don't don't think you're alone in circumstances like that i think a lot of us who have had kids or have kids have experienced that and the most important thing i think that you mentioned there is that you took a moment and you looked at yourself what's my part of this equation i can look at them and blame them for doing what kids do resisting Mm -hmm. having another agenda um and it doesn't mean you shouldn't look at that, but I can also look at myself and say, all right, what's, I could take pause. That's, you know, and what, what's, what is, what is my role here in this whole process? Um, and it sounds like you, 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 like you were being 
what they call the forcing current. Like this is this is as a family, I think this is a good thing we need to do, and this is what we're gonna do. Um, so your your intention and your heart was was in the right place. You just you 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 had um, a resistant tribe. <laughs> yeah, there's a delicate way I've learned. I've been married for I don't know how many years now, thirteen or fourteen years, and two kids into this, and so I'm not new to this game. It's and and I'm definitely every day is a, is a, is it's not perfect and it's not horrible, but there's definitely a full gamut of all these experiences. And one of the things that I'm really uh, starting to appreciate is that there's multiple ways that uh, something can be looked at, and if it doesn't fit, you know the way I'm looking at it, then maybe obviously they say you're supposed to try to understand what the other person might look at it. How, how was this other person looking at it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where I, I feel like, you know, when that happened, I was able, I, I reset in the afternoon. Yeah, and I being able back. to jump into someone else's shoes. What, what are they experiencing from this? And, and to see it from a different angle, let's look at it this way. All right. It's a perception shift. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to ask yourself, is this a reasonable, Expectation, and when you were telling this, it reminded me of um, when my kids were younger, and um, I went to a, a colleague, a, you know, well-known um, psychiatrist, and you know, I, he was across the hall from me, and I, I said, Doc, I said, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I was telling, I was expressing my frustration for um, having no downtime. I got to go home, and I got to do this. We got hockey, and we got, we got a million things to do. And, and he looked at me and he's like, the problem isn't that you don't have time, downtime. The problem is that you think you should. Hmm. <laughs> so, so it's changing the way you're looking at it rather than trying to change your reality. Yeah. Shift it. I, I like that when, you know, the, the other thought that comes to mind is a river that's flowing, right? If you walk up to a river and you're like, oh, you step right up to it and you're like, this river needs to come over here to where my campsite is. So I'm going to start to divert this water. And so you dig a trench and try to start bringing the trench over to your tent. And the water just wants to go this way, and you just, it's futile. You never can get that water channeled. So instead, you finally come to the term, I gotta move my tent closer to the river. Exactly. So it's like, look, look. Exactly. It's a perfect, perfect metaphor, Pete. It's exactly, you know, um, there's something. What here. is it rather than what you want it to be? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, game changing. It's, 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 um, that's a perfect way to look at it because continuing to try to, I mean, how many times have you heard the saying, and we've all heard it, um, the definition of insanity, <laughs> doing doing the same thing over and over again, um, expecting a different outcome. Right. Uh, it's not working. Uh, what, 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 and, then, and then the other thing is um, making sure that we're in a regulated and coherent state. Because when we are not, when we are not in a coherent state, when we're dysregulated, as human beings, all of us are stupid. We're cut off, we're literally cut off from our higher thinking. So it's getting ourselves back to an even level of of um, regulation. Um, it's, it's it's huge, and maybe in future episodes we can talk about specific techniques to do that. But to me, that's that's huge because we are when we're engaged in that, we're we're essentially stupid. So taking pause is 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 huge. Yeah, it's reevaluating what it may from, or may not from, be from a regulated state. Um, and and intentionally doing something to create that state. It could be just going for a walk. I told you the story about me trying to put my windshield wipers on the damn car, and <laughs> I was I almost was ready to break them. Yeah. And it should, I'm like, this should be so simple. And I, I literally I, I stopped because I knew where my mind was going, and I knew I needed to regulate. I took a walk around the block, maybe a half mile. I got back to my car, I picked the windshield wiper up, and it snapped it on. <laughs> yes, and I was like, oh yeah. my god, well, from that state. We're 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 not intelligent. We don't, we do not have access to our intelligence. So one of the things that comes to mind is when um, when I'm overloaded or overwhelmed, right? And I can't, you know, a lot of reasons why tiffs or struggles will pop up in my house is because either you know my wife had a hard day at work or I had a hard day, and they come together, and the kids have their needs, and all of a sudden you're like ah, you know, and nobody can deal anymore. So it's like overwhelming, you know. I think yeah. anger picks up where information leads off. I think I read that once. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
so um, right. when I get to one of the things we do with at my business is we have a, a commercial window, commercial residential window cleaning business, which um, I started and a damn good one. Yeah, thirty eight years ago. Um, but one of the you know when I have the new employees that show up on the job, right? They're like, oh God, I don't know anything about window cleaning. I'm like, don't worry, we're going to show you how it's done. And um, and you get up to a house and it has sixty five windows on it, right? <laughs> sixty five windows, and people, you know, you can see my guys starting to wow. question. They start to question whether they want this job They're or not. They're looking at the top of the mountain. <laughs> and I'm just like, look, don't sweat it. I'm going to show you how to get through this, right? So we'll get into the house and we, you know, we set up and there's a system. You start doing this one thing the same way, scrub, spray, squeegee, whatever. The the, the system you is the system. system. Yeah. And when you get into this system and you put your head down and you just start breathing in out in out and you're doing the same thing over and over again you get one done right it takes about four yeah. minutes and you're like oh that was not bad and then you jump then you know, your mind might jump to all the other windows and you're like nope you start to get overloaded you're like come back to this next window and then you do the next one and the same thing and do it again and then it becomes a race of how smooth and how quick you can do each window so now you're so you've shifted your focus completely shifted my focus from looking at the top of the mountain and going how the hell are we going to get there to literally like putting one foot in front of the other, in essence. Yeah, um, and someone else said, "How do you how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> one spoonful at a time." So, uh, one, and I one think sp- <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, well, that, well, I like one bite at a time. That's the metaphor. Yeah. That's the yeah. metaphor. So yeah. when we get overwhelmed, we get overloaded. You know, just do what you can do, the best you can do, wherever you find yourself. And I think that's uh, that's very similar to um, flare ups that happen, like in around my house and whatnot. And I've been learning. You know, just take it easy. What can you focus on? Where can you put your attention? Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So I think the, another thing to highlight, um, and we said it right in the beginning, and I'm glad you said it because you, you took a moment to pause and look at your part of the equation. A lot of us don't like to do that. We want to see the problem out there. It's that if, if only they would do this or he would do that or she would do that. And, yeah, point um, the finger. Um, it doesn't doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Um, and I've got, like I said, 13 years into this, and and saying it's your fault, and wait for that person to change does not work. No, it start does where not you stand. Work. Yeah. That's my. Start where you stand. Start with with you, and go from there. So um, I I love this platform to be able to share this with you because we've been friends for a good long while, 20 plus years, and and every time we're hanging out, you know. We get to, I love to be able to share these like verklempt, you know, experiences that I'm having and then shed this indigenous teaching that I had. And then you can drop in the psych, the the clinical psychology understanding of that. And that's one of my best. Well, we've been doing it informally for for, for years, sitting in uh, in your office or playing music and just having these discussions. So it's nice to maybe put these out there and help a few people because uh, it's a common experience. Right. And and I hope you're liking and enjoying th- what you're hearing here in this content too as we thumb through our lives here at Big Talk from the and, Little House. And I'm going to add one thing. If, if you like it, please subscribe. Yeah. Hit the like button and share it. Um, Hit the know. like button and subscribe. <laughs> Tell your friends about this. And um, by all means, you know, email us if you'd like to be on the show or if you have a question that that Andy and I can talk about from different perspectives, yeah, indigenous wisdom yeah. and or clinical psychology. I, we would love to hear you. So um, thanks again, folks, for this quick tune in to Big Talk from the Little House. And just remember, um, you are the person that your dog thinks you are. And <laughs> raising the vibration of the planet. One, One podcast at a time. Woo! All I right. Say that. So that's like <laughs> tagline to keep banging in the head. Out at her. All right. Thanks, <laughs> guys. See you soon.